Hi, families. I'm Katie, and I am so happy to have church with you right now. Let's think together about playing outside, running, jumping, enjoying the sunshine. But what would you do if you wanted to play outside and there was rain, thunder, lightning, and howling wind? What a letdown. I'm thankful I can trust Jesus, even when I feel let down. And our point is all about that. Every day, I can trust Jesus. Now say it with me, come on. Every day, I can trust Jesus. Great job. <laughs> now it's time for our everyday song that talks about that. Stand up so you can sing and dance along. so excited you're joining us today. Today we're talking about the story of Elisha raising the Shunammite woman's son from the dead. This is a crazy story in which the Shunammite woman got her hopes up about having a son and ended up feeling completely let down when her son died. Many of us have experienced letdowns in our life, but it's important not to let those consume us to the point where we lose trust in Jesus. That's why today we're talking about how we can trust Jesus every day. So say this after me, every day I can trust Jesus. We're gonna start things off by singing a song together. So go ahead and stand up and sing this out with us as loud as you can. Imagination, my imagination. 
Now I'm living, I'm living out loud Jesus, let my life be 
You guys sounded so good. Thank you for singing along with us. Now we're gonna take some time to watch a Bible story together. Like I said earlier, today's story is about Elisha and the Shunammite woman. Let's check it out. One day, Elisha made his way to a town called Shunem. There was a woman in Shunem who had a lot of money. Anytime Elisha would pass through Shunem, this woman insisted that he come and eat at her and her husband's house. She loved having Elisha over for meals. Elisha would pass through her town so much that eventually she said to her husband, you know what, we should build a room for Elisha on top of our house. We could put a bed, a table, a chair, and a lamp in it for him. That way he has somewhere to stay when he's passing through. So that's exactly what they did. Elisha was so grateful that one day he had his servant named Gehazi go get the woman and bring her to Elisha's room. Once she got there, Elisha had his servant Gehazi say, you went through all this trouble for us. What can I do for you? The woman didn't say anything that Elisha could do for her. So Elijah asked Gehazi what he thought they should do. Gehazi answered saying, well, she doesn't have any kids and her husband is pretty old. That's it, Elijah thought. Then he told Gehazi to go tell the woman that by this time next year, she would have a son. The woman was in disbelief. Don't lie to me, she said, but Elijah wasn't lying. Within the next year, she had a little baby boy. After that, many years had passed and the boy grew up. One day, the boy went out to his father who was working in the fields and he started complaining that his head was hurting. So the father told one of his servants to pick the boy up and carry him to his mother. His mother held him until about noon, but then something terrible happened. The boy died. The mother was heartbroken, but she didn't show it. Instead, she took her son up to Elisha's room and laid him on Elisha's bed. Then she said to her husband, have one of the servants bring a donkey to me so I can go to Elijah and come back. Her husband asked why she was going today, but instead of telling him that their son had just died, she replied with, everything's fine. Then she put a saddle on the donkey and her and her servant rode as fast as they could straight to Elisha. Elisha saw the woman coming from a long way off. So he said to Gehazi, hey look, there's the Shunammite woman. Run out to meet her and ask her if everything's okay with her, her husband, and her child. When Gehazi asked her, she answered, everything's fine. But her attitude changed when she finally got to Elisha. She fell down to the ground and grabbed his feet and cried. Did I ask for a son? Didn't I tell you not to get my hopes up? She said. Elisha, seeing the woman's great sadness, turned to Gehazi and told him to take his staff and go to the child as fast as he could. Once he got there, he should place the staff on the boy's face. So Gehazi ran and did exactly that, but the woman refused to leave Elisha's side. When Gehazi got to the boy and put the staff on his face, there was no sound or sign of life. So he went back and told Elijah that the child had not awakened. So Elisha came to the house and went up to his room where the woman had placed her son. He prayed to God and then he walked over to the child and laid on top of him. He stretched out his body over the boy and when he did, the boy's body became warm, but he still didn't get up. Elisha stood up and walked back and forth. Then he stretched his body out over the boy again. Suddenly, the boy sneezed. Then he sneezed again and again. The boy sneezed seven times and his eyes shot open. He was alive. Elisha brought the Shunammite woman back and told her to pick up her son. She fell at his feet with thankfulness. Then she picked up her son who just moments ago had been dead, but was now very much alive. The end. Our friend, Pastor Cameron, is going to be talking to us a little bit more about our story right now. So let's take a look. Have you ever really gotten your hopes up about something only to be completely let down? Like when you're young and you get a balloon and you're just so excited to have that balloon, but then out of nowhere, it pops. Talk about a letdown. Or maybe you've been looking forward to this new movie for so long and then it finally comes out and it's just terrible. It's not even a good movie. Letdown. 
Or maybe you really wanted something for your birthday, so you keep hinting at it more and more as your birthday gets closer. Then your birthday finally comes, and you see a beautifully wrapped present that seems to be the size of that thing that you've been wanting. So you tear into the wrapping paper so excited, and it's just a pair of socks. Wool socks. Socks? <laughs> That is what we would call a letdown. You had your hopes up really high, and ultimately, you were completely let down. Nobody likes being let down. In the story of Elisha and the Shunammite woman's son, the Shunammite woman was completely let down. When Elisha told her that she would have a son, the first thing she did was convey that she did not want to get her hopes up. She said, no, no way, no way, don't you lie to me. But sure enough, a year later she had a son and her hopes were finally realized. But it didn't last long. As she held her dying son in her arms, she was crushed. She was totally and completely let down. Some of us are in a similar position as the Shunammite woman. We got our hopes up. Things were going so well. And all of a sudden, we got let down. Maybe you lost a family member too. Maybe your parents got a divorce. Maybe you needed healing and you didn't get it. Whatever it may be, you feel like God let you down. You see, if the Shunammite woman had stayed focused on her son that had died and why it had happened, she never would have experienced such an amazing miracle. Was she sad? Yes, and that's okay. But she didn't keep her focus there. Instead, she shifted her focus to the man of God, Elisha. She had been let down, but she had a new hope that Elisha would be able to raise her son back to life. We have to do what the Shunammite woman did and stop focusing on the thing that let us down and shift our focus to our new hope, Jesus. I know it's hard sometimes to get past that thing that let you down, but like our verse said, never give up. Ask God to help you trust him and he will. If we put our trust and our hope in Jesus, it will all be worth it. Even when things let us down, we can still trust Jesus every day. Most of us have felt let down at one point or another. We got our hopes up and ultimately things didn't work out. But like Pastor Cameron talked about, in those times when we get let down, it's important not to focus on the problem, but to shift our focus to Jesus. I would encourage you to take time with your parents or small group leader to talk about a time when you felt let down by God. There may not always be an answer as to why something happened, but if we shift our focus to Jesus, we can trust that He will help us through it. Remember, every day we can trust Jesus. That's it for this week. Thank you so much for joining us and we'll see you next time. We've already learned a lot and now we get to learn something else, a Bible verse. I'll say it first. Psalm 31, 14. I trust in you, Lord. I say, you are my God, you are my God, you are my God. <laughs> now I'll say little parts and you can repeat them after me. You ready? Okay. Psalm 31, 14. I trust in you, Lord. I say, you are my God, you are my God, you are my God. <laughs> you did an amazing job. That verse reminds us that God is our God and we can trust him no matter how we feel. I had a great time having church with you. I'm gonna leave you with some questions to talk about with your family. When they pop up on the screen, just pause the video and have a little chat. See you later.